Today we're going to be roasting up our Christmas turkey on the Weber kettle and we're going to finish it off with an awesome turkey gravy. Hi everyone, I'm James from Barbecue.com and welcome back to the second episode in this five part series on how to prepare your Christmas dinner on the barbecue. I've teamed up with the guys from Hillstown Farm Shop to walk you through each element of your Christmas dinner and how you would prepare it and cook it outside over the coals. You can check out the links in the description for Hillstown's website and social media and you can also order their meat through that link. So today we're roasting the turkey. If you missed the first episode in this series where we put the turkey into a brine overnight then you can click the little link up here and that will take you to that video. I suggest you watch that first and then come back and finish this one. So on Christmas morning the first thing you want to do is get the coals lit and get that temperature steady before you ever put your bird anywhere near the barbecue. You can prepare everything else we're going to need today while the barbecue is lighting and the temperature is settling. So we'll bring the cam over and I'll show you exactly how I've set up the barbecue for this cook. As you can see here, we have the barbecue set up for the split indirect method. So we have coals on either side of the grill and an area in the center here with no direct heat underneath it. This is going to allow us to place our tray with the turkey in it on the center here and then we'll have heat on either side and with the lid closed that turkey will roast. I've used the Weber briquettes because they have a nice long burn time and you get a nice even heat from them. You could use lump wood for this but the temperatures tend to be a little bit more erratic and things are going to be hectic enough so you may as well give yourself a break and use the briquette. Okay so while our barbecue is coming up to temperature we'll take a look at the turkey. I have lifted it out of the brine um, and just patted the skin dry. Uh, apart from that I've done nothing else to it. So what we're going to do now is get a little bit of butter rubbed underneath the skin. Uh, we've already packed moisture in there with the, the brine but the butter will just add that little bit of extra flavour. I'm going to season up the outside of it and then we're going to trust the bird to hold everything together while it's on the barbecue. So what you want to do is go in from the cavity end and just use your fingers to tease the skin away from the, the breast meat. Uh, try your best not to puncture any holes in the skin. You want it to stay intact so you don't have anything leaking out and it will hold all that moisture in there. But just go down as far as your hands will let you and create a cavity in between the skin and the breast meat. So next up then you want to take some softened butter, you can just work it in between your hands uh, to soften it up but if you leave butter out at room temperature it'll be fine as long as you can get it pushed down in there uh, without too many problems. And just hold your flap of skin up, push that butter right down in. Once it's in there then you can smear it out from the outside as long as you get it pushed down in as far as you can. So you have one side done then go on to the next side and repeat the process. So once you have that butter all pushed in there just make sure the skin's pulled back across the breast. I want to try and stop that retracting as much as possible. Okay the next thing we're going to do then is truss the bird before we season it. Uh, for the seasoning we're going to rub a little bit of that butter on the outside and then we're just going to go with good old traditional salt and pepper. Um, but to avoid handling it too much after we do that we'll truss it first and then add the seasonings. Yeah, I've brought you in a little bit closer while we're trussing this up just so you can see what I'm doing. So we start from this end, the ugly end. So our parson's nose is here. So you want to take your twine, this is just sort of regular twine but I've doubled it over here just for a bit of extra strength. Go underneath the parson's nose and around. That gives you somewhere to tie to. Next, go underneath the legs, pull them up into place, and double over. Now, at this point, get these sitting where you want them. You can double around again just to make sure that stays in place. Okay, so next you want to come down in between the legs and the breast. Uh, spin around. So, and then we're going to pull this under here. Just underneath the edge of the breast. We'll 
put one knot in it first. Make sure this stays down under. So you want this string coming down underneath this breast. You don't want it coming at this angle here. It should come down underneath. With one knot in it there. Next, take your wings. Lift them up into place. This holds them nice and steady. Just tie your knot off. Always give yourself plenty of extra string. There's nothing worse than getting to the end of it and realizing you don't have enough. Just take your knife, cut off any excess. Get rid of that. And this flap of skin from the neck habit, it will fold flat underneath. bird all trussed up. Now the reason for doing this is mostly presentation, it doesn't really benefit anyway in cooking, but when this bird starts to cook and the skin starts to tension up, the legs have a habit of sticking straight up in the air, where the wings can go funny shapes, so it just keeps everything together, keeps it nice and compact, it'll fit into your tray better, plus it just looks better at the end. So now that that's trussed up, we're just going to take a little bit more of that butter and rub it over the outside of the breast. This is going to help her season and stick a little bit. We're only going with salt and pepper today. I see we've piped a lot of flavour in with that brine. Just rub a little bit over the breast and over the legs. Okay, once you've given the skin a nice coating of butter, we're going to go in with our seasoning. So today we're using the smoky bray uh, smoked sea salt and then also the smoky bray smoked pepper. So our simple flavours. I've uh, just got a glove on here to help pat the skin down. His hand has nothing, but it will not touch the bird. So we'll go on first with some of the pepper. Amazing smell coming off it. Awesome. Okay, next on with the sea salt. Perfect. Right, there's one more thing we're going to do, and that is we're going to lay some streaky bracken over the breast. Um, the reason being, it'll keep the breast nice and moist, the fat rendering out of the bacon um, keeps all the meat inside nice, so there's a little bit more fat content there. Also, we're going to set this onto a trivet of veg, which we're then going to turn into our turkey gravy. So the fat rendering out of that bacon will drip down in there and give it some more flavour as well. So here's our beautiful thick cut streaky bacon from Hillstown Farm Shop. This is from their rare breed middle white pigs. Uh, it's a great quality, lovely marbling through the meat, nice fat on there. So this is going to go perfect over the top of our uh, turkey breast. So we're just going to lay them right over top, press them down on. Don't really want to overlap these, they're just to Add that little bit of extra fat content. And that's it, our turkey is ready for the barbecue. So I'm going to lift this out of the way, clean down, and we'll get the trivet ready that we're going to put this onto while we roast it. All right, so these are the ingredients for our trivet. We have three sort of medium-sized carrots, uh, around about 12 shallots, four sticks of celery, uh, clementine, about six, seven cloves of garlic, about a teaspoon of cloves, one cinnamon stick, and a couple of sprigs of rosemary. So we're just going to roughly chop all this, place that in the bottom of the tray, and the turkey will sit on top of it. It serves really as two purposes. It keeps the turkey off the bottom of the tray, so it stops the, the bottom of it getting scorched. Um, it also then will cook down anything rendering out of that turkey, all them cooking juices will mix with the veg and give us a great base for a turkey gravy. So prep for this stuff is pretty simple. Okay, we're going to leave the garlic cloves in there as they are. Cloves are fine, cinnamon sticks fine, sprigs of rosemary are fine. The celery, carrots and the clementine will need chopped down a little. I'm also going to half these shallots. You don't have to be fussy about it. 
this is all going to get strained out afterwards, so no problems. Just give it all a rough chop. You don't want it too small because the idea is to keep the, the turkey off the bottom of the tray. Sprinkle those in. Same with carrots. I'm not peeling these. They've been washed. and give it a little bit of a scrub. Whoa, they're going to run away on me. Just cut them into chunks. Clementine, I think we'll go in quarters with it. And the shallots, once again, I'm not going to peel them. I'm just going to go in half with them. So they roast out. All these skins and stuff are all going to come out in the end anyway. Good does that look? Lovely colours. Make sure your rosemary herbs are all spread out throughout it. And your garlic cloves, they all roast down, go super sweet. So that's it, all, almost ready for the turkey. The last thing I'm going to add in is around about a cup of apple juice. Just to keep a little bit of moisture in the tray. Stop anything sticking to the bottom. That's what's ready for the turkey. I cannot believe I almost forgot these. So here we have the giblets from the turkey, so the turkey neck, and all the other little goodies. I'll just pop these in. These can are going to give it a real deep flavour. This is the turkey neck. It's great for making stock with, so it's just going to give us a good base for our gravy. Now we are ready for the turkey. So your turkey will sit on top. You want a tray that is just large enough for it and no more. You want this sitting in too deep. So it's sitting well up out of the tray, it means it's going to get heat all around it nice and evenly. Uh, all your juices will render down, all that veg will soften down, and it is going to be perfect. Okay, let's head over to the barbecue and we'll get this on. Okay, so our temperature is sitting nice and steady on the barbecue, setting it around 160 degrees Celsius. You might be in sort of 150 to 165 range. Uh, with the coals pushed to either side of the barbecue, um, we're going to set this tray in the center. Be careful, there's a bit of weight in it. So our coals are either side of the barbecue, our tray is placed right in the middle, so there's no heat directly underneath it. The last thing we want to do then is push in a probe so we can keep an eye on the internal temperature of the meat. I'm going to put this in from the back and go into the deepest part of the breast. And we're using the ThermoQ Wi-Fi today. Nice long probes on it, so there's no problems getting right down into the deepest part of that turkey breast. We can then use our phone to monitor this from the inside. Perfect for a Christmas day. I don't have to stand out here and check it with an instant read. Uh, we will, however, once we get up to that closer temperature, we're gonna check it with the instant read in a few different places just to make sure we have a nice season, even cook. But for now, that is going to look after it. I can go back in the house, enjoy Christmas Day like everybody else, and just leave this to do its thing. Two hours into the cook. Um, we're going to take a look at it now and see how we're getting on, what our colour is like. Lovely colour on the legs. You can see our bacon has started to shrink up, uh, a piece of it's actually fallen off here but we're going to remove the bacon from it at this point um, and get some colour onto the breast. It's done its job, that fat's all rendered, lovely and crispy. Do not throw the bacon out or eat it. We're going to add this into the gravy after whenever we're making it up. So uh, take the bacon off um, we'll let the breast get a little bit more colour. The legs are looking good at the minute. Uh, I'll keep an eye on those, we don't want them to get too much more colour, so if I think they're getting a little bit dark, we can wrap them in foil until the breast comes up to colour. Temperature wise, say we're just over two hours, um, we're sitting at 52 degrees. 
Celsius internal, so that's in the breast. So a little bit to go yet before we're there, but it's coming along nicely. So we'll get this back and taken off. So there you can see that's exposed the whole breast now, and these lighter parts, they've still got a nice sheen off them from that bag and fat, so with a bit of heat they'll crisp up nicely and turn that nice golden brown colour. Okay, so I think we're nearly there. There's a few things I want to talk about just before I lift it off the barbecue and we get on to the next stage, and that's about the cook. I would highly recommend you get some kind of thermometer. Uh, today we were using the ThermoQ Wi-Fi and that takes a continuous reading of the temperature and we'll monitor it and you can look at it on your phone. But if that's all a bit fancy for you, an instant read thermometer is more than enough. Something like this, the Thermapen. That takes all the guesswork out. So come Christmas everybody has their own timings, so many hours per pound plus an extra 30 minutes and then if the sun rises before 9 o'clock you need to add it another 20 minutes but if it's after 9 o'clock you take off 20 minutes early and you get what I mean, it's complete guesswork. There's not nothing to say that turkey is ready. Every cook is different, uh, every oven is different at holding temperatures and how uh, steady it will hold everything so there's just no way of guessing. Whereas if you push one of these in and it gives you the reading you know it's ready. So Thermopen is the one I choose to use, I trust it that it's given me a good reading. Uh, but any instant read thermometer will do. The other thing is in the temperature of your barbecue and maintaining that. We put the initial two thirds of a chimney starter of briquettes in. Um, that held the temperature for a good two and a half hours and it started to dip slightly. Um, so I lit up a few more and added them into it. You can put them in on lit, but I just prefer to light them in the chimney starter and then tip them into the sides. Um, so just keep an eye on it and manage it. If you need some tips on uh, controlling the temperature of your barbecue, there is a video up here um, that will talk you through sort of seven tips on how to maintain your temperature and get, hit the temperature each time. So we have tested the turkey with the instant read. Um, the breast, uh, the deepest part, sitting around sort of 77, 78 degrees. The thighs have gone a bit higher, so they're um, in around 83 or so, which is perfect. You want them fire meats at a slightly higher temperature and that makes them a little bit more tender. So let's get it lifted off. So our bird is off and looking beautiful. It's got a great colour on it. You can really see that bit where we took the bacon off has coloured in nicely again. Um, still feels really moist. Nice crispy skin as well. So we need to lift this off the tray. The easiest way to do that is to go into the cavity and then just support it at the back. Careful because there will be stuff running out of it. And then over onto a serving platter. The smell coming out of that tray is amazing. Okay, we're gonna go take this inside, uh, wrap it up in foil, and we need to let that rest for at least an hour, hour and a half. That'll give us time to get the gravy ready and everything else. If you need to hold it for longer, you can. If for some reason you finished a bit earlier than you planned to, double wrap it in foil and put a heavy towel over the top of it. Um, that'll extend your time. You can hold it for probably up to sort of two and a half hours at least. Okay, so our turkey's in resting. Time to concentrate on the gravy. Uh, first of all, we need to remove some of the fat from this. There's quite a lot of cooks out of the bird, so we don't want it all in there at least some in it is flavour. So if we push everything to one side of the tray, we've got a little trick where you take a slice of bread and just lay it on top. Let it sit for a few minutes and that lets all the fat come rise to the top. And if you just lay that on top, sort of drag it along like a net, all the fat sticks to the bread and absorbs into it. yummy. So I guess most of it out. There's still a little bit in there but uh, that gets the majority of it out. So I have a chimney of lumpwood lighting up there. We're going to add it into the barbecue to ramp the heat away up and then we'll get this back onto it and I'll show you everything that has to go into it to make it into a killer gravy. So I've brought you in nice and close here. We've got that tray back onto the heat again. So we've pulled them two baskets into the centre and filled them full of lumpwood to get a nice high heat. Put the tray back on and we've brought it up to a simmer and we're going to start to reduce all this down. 
So we have all our ingredients in there from our trivet. So we want to add back in the bacon that we had on top of our turkey. Just get all the flavour off that. Come all the mix about. So next, to help thicken it up, we have a mixture of about a heap tablespoon of flour with a little bit of water. And give that a whisk. Just add that into the gravy. As this simmers away, then that's going to help it thicken. And lastly, we are going in with a, bit, a liter of vegetable stock. So you want to make sure you have a nice high-sided pan for this. Perfect. So we'll get the lid back onto the barbecue again, get this up to a rolling simmer, and that will reduce down the liquid, and then we're going to pass it through a strainer, uh, and that will be our finished gravy. simmering for about 15-20 minutes and it started to thicken up nicely so we're going to pass it through a strainer um, just to take out all them ingredients so we're just left with a nice rich gravy. So using gloves and try to be as careful as you can. Start to add everything into the strainer. So you can get every last little bit out. Perfect. Didn't spill a drop. Just give that all a press down, mash it with the back of the spoon. Just make sure you're getting all the flavour out. And you should be left with what's a pretty nice gravy. So you can set that back on the heat to keep warm while you get everything else ready. Christmas turkey done on the barbecue with a lovely gravy to go with it. That, that gravy is the business. Adding those uh, giblets and stuff into it is so deep in flavour. Gotta love it. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the. No, I'm not joking. Have to carve into this. I'll pull you in a bit closer so we can get a nice close up shot of it. Right, let's give this a try then. Still nice and crispy. See all the juice in it there. I'm so looking forward to trying this. See, can you see? Lovely and moist. Nom nom nom. I can really taste the clementines from the brine. There's a little peppery kick coming through the skin from the pepper that we rubbed it with. It's just so moist. Give the gravy a try. Not that I haven't already, but... That is where it's at. Mm. I love a turkey. Doing it on the barbecue is not as hard as you think. You don't have to panic about it, it's all the same rules apply. If you don't feel like doing it on the barbecue, uh, this technique and this recipe will still work in your kitchen. So I've left a link in the description below with a recipe for the brine and everything we had in the trivet that goes into the gravy and the step-by-step -step process of what you've watched today. But hopefully the video will have inspired you a little bit to maybe get outside and cook it this year on your barbecue. So there's still lots to come. The turkey is only one part of the Christmas meal. So uh, remember to subscribe to the channel for the future videos in this little Christmas series. Uh, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.